So after they leave the tunnel at 7 minutes and 38 seconds, they see a very strange scene spread out. They get to this point in 7 minutes and 38 seconds, it's even faster than some Hollywood movies. So you see these creepy billboards in the shape of an eye, which remind me of the manga of Yoshiharu Tsuge. Then as the camera pans down, you see the father and the mother and Chiharu... Uh, I mean Chisato... No, 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 it's Chihiro. So Chihiro follows up the stairs. I really can't get the name right. So this unmanned entertainment district spreads out. And this area is in between the real world and the illusionary world. So humans built a bunch of weird buildings to create a theme park in originally sacred area where gods lived, with the money that they earned just before the bursting of the bubble economy. That's how the monsters ended up inhabiting there. Well, Chihiro's father says these are the remains of the bubble economy, but actually this kind of theme park was everywhere in Japan since Meiji period. So, For example, there used to be an observatory in Asakusa, Tokyo called Fujisan Soranjo. Uh, this is the brochure from the back then. They made a miniature of Mount Fuji in Asakusa Roku Entertainment District in Meiji 20th. It was 32 meters tall, so it was pretty tall. And not only that, people could climb it up to the top. There's a picture too. We only have one with low quality. Uh, you can see people riding bikes in the front so you can compare the heights. But this is what was called Asakusa Fuji. Again, um, it's 32 meters tall, so it was pretty tall to the point that people could actually walk the path from the bottom to the top. However, it was destroyed in Meiji 23rd and the famous Ryoun Kaku or so-called Asakusa 12 stories was built on that site. Well, it looked like a vertical version of Leaning Tower of Pisa, so this kind of buildings were built in Asakusa. There's even a color print of this. Uh, many buildings like this were built in Asakusa, and they were in great numbers during the good times in Meiji and Taisho period. There were many famous leisure facilities like Keiokaku Yuen, Kagetsu Yuenchi, and uh, Togetsu En. There was also a garden called Okuyama Fuke in Asakusa, which was called a department store of shrines and temples with all kinds of Shinto gods and Buddha available to worship. Uh, these kinds of places appear in novels written by Rampo Edugawa, such as Strange Tale of Panorama Island and Ghost Tower. Rampo wrote different novels with similar plots where people built theme parks during an economic bubble between the end of Meiji period to Taisho period that insult gods, or should I say ignore their sanctitude, which triggers a series of mysterious incidents. Well, if any of you want to know more about this, I'll talk a bit more as I show some reference. Well, what I want to point out here is that spirit away is set in an abandoned theme park where ghosts settle in. So there are some similarities. So at 9 minutes, Chisato's parents, uh, I mean uh, Chihiro's parents, I keep saying her name wrong, while her parents eat the food feverishly, Ch Chihiro has a bad feeling so she leaves the parents and walks around the town. So, it's this scene. She's walking the town. An empty downtown extends endlessly. There are lanterns that are later lit up beautifully. Uh, what I like here is that composition where Chihiro stands at the corner of the screen. Also, pay attention to where the shadow is. There are the buildings that are right above or they tilt slightly as the sunlight shines in. These details foreshadow the scary events that happens later, so every detail has a meaning. 
Chihiro is put on the opposite side of the shadow intentionally to say that it's still right outside and nothing has happened yet, but something will happen soon. And in fact, the story does get scarier and scarier from here and on. So, um, as she climbs up the stairs, she sees a mysterious building. There's a gorgeous pine tree and a garden lanterns, and beyond them, an arched bridge with red handrails. And beyond that arched bridge is a gigantic bathhouse named Abraya. Well, the red arched bridge is built for a practical reason as well, but it's made to follow a rule of Chinese thoughts of Xingxian, where any place mountain wizards live has an arched bridge for visitors to cross so they can enter a different world. The rich people back in old days in Japan built Japanese gardens, but despite the names, they were supposed to be sacred lands of gods where Chinese mountains wizards would live. That's how each of those gardens had a miniature version of arched bridges. So this one in the picture is a huge version of it. And beyond that, you see some magnificent structure. At 11 minutes and 15 seconds, Chihiro tries to cross the bridge, but she's not supposed to because a crossed bridge is God's land. But regardless, she tries to go to the other side. Then a boy named Haku, dressed in white, appears and says, Go back! You can't go any farther. So, this is Haku. He says, go back, you can't go, facing and approaching the screen. But then, as you see, the shadow behind Haku extends drastically. So, because the sun is set in rapid speed, the shadow of the bridge behind him grows so vigorously while Haku talks in a hurry. And his profile becomes more and more red. The red sky is spreading out and the shadow grows horizontally longer and longer. This is what you see in a vampire movie. The scene is so horrific. The scene also shows how fast time passes in the world Abraya exists in, which is the world of gods and wizards. As you can see from here, it's 10 times faster than the real world. Later, I will explain why 10 times faster, but the whole plot of Spirit Away only takes about 4 days. It's only 3 nights and 4 days in length, but it's about a month long in the real world. Actually, maybe even longer than that. And how fast the time flows in a different world is an important theme, which I will explain next week, so please keep that in mind. For now, let's just remember that the time goes really fast there. Then the lanterns are lit up and black shadows grow out of the ground on the street that was previously unmanned. And Chihiro panics and tries to run back to the parents saying, Dad, Mom! Then the parents have unnoticeably turned into pigs as a punishment for eating the offering for the gods. On top of that, these numerous black beings that look like ghosts appear in the town that has already darkened. These are so well depicted. Um, the previously empty town is now filled with these black shadows that have silently grown from the ground, and they start wandering around Chihiro. As she decides to leave the parents and runs down the stairs to where she originally came from, she sees more black shadows approaching her. Um, so, the taste of the movie becomes more and more like a horror movie. However, when she descends the stairs, she notices that the white plain has turned into water. The tunnel which she has walked through is now far away, and there are city lights beyond the tunnel. Between them is a large body of water, like an ocean, now she can't return home.
This scene shows hopelessness, but it's also beautiful. It also shows how Miyazaki doesn't just explain things, but rather show them visually. Chihiro says, it's all lie, all lie, disappear, disappear. Then her body starts becoming translucent. Then a tremendously gorgeous and luxurious fairy appears. And from that fairy, a lot of strange monsters come ashore. But Chihiro also sees them through her translucent hands. The scene depicts two different situations. One is that Chihiro is in fear as she realizes her body is vanishing. The other is that through those hands she finds the glimmering fairy. The two circumstances of what is happening to her and around her are being visualized simultaneously in one frame, so I can't say how well this scene is shot. It's not explanatory but more suspenseful, which makes the viewers curious to see what will happen next. The storyboarding in this scene is a true masterwork. Now, when the fairy arrives at the shore, 